The process by which we see is both fascinating, but also extraordinarily complicated, but understandably something that we're really interested in in psychology. Now, to be fair, all of the senses are pretty interesting because they tell us a lot about how our body and our minds work. One way that we study them is by using this thing called an absolute threshold, which is the minimum level of energy required uh, for a stimulus to be detected by any one of these senses about 50% of the time. Uh, here are some absolute thresholds for the average adult human. The smallest stimulus that we should be able to detect is a flame of a candle 50 kilometers away on a clear dark night, the ticking of a watch 6 kilometers away, the wing of a fly falling on the cheek from one centimeter. I feel like I'm reading like a potion for some kind of witch brew. One drop of perfume in a large house uh, and one teaspoon of sugar in 10 liters of water. Now there's obviously some room for interpretation here and it's interesting to think about how they tested these things, but take it as you may. Now, as mentioned before, of all these senses, vision is probably the one that interests us the most in psychology. Uh, so enter my gallery and have a look at these two pictures. Uh, over here, we have a lovely wedding between uh, Mr. and Mrs. Owl, it seems. Uh, and on this side, we have a good little doggo uh, keeping inside his little bubble boundary. <laughs> now, these are both tricky pictures, and we'll talk a bit more in some future lessons about how things can trick our eyes. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make here is that you see these pictures like instantly. But there's actually so much going on between the moment that we first lay our eyes on these things and then our brain telling us what we're looking at. You see, in just a split second, your visual system goes through this entire process of reception, transduction, transmission, selection, organization, and interpretation. It's pretty crazy, but let's go step by step to try and understand it. So if it was possible to put a camera behind your eye and see literally what your eye sees, um, not what your brain's telling you that you're seeing, but literally the raw image from your eye, you might see something like this. It's upside down, back to front, it's blurry, there seem to be like missing patches and all sorts of things. But when this information is sent to your brain, this is what your brain then tells you that you're seeing. This is the power of our visual system and it's something we're gonna be looking at um, through the next few lessons. So you may have noticed that this diagram splits up quite nicely into two sections, sensation, so us receiving vision and then perception or perceiving the vision. We're gonna have a little look at the first part now. In other words, the way that our eye tells the brain what it's seeing. So one thing you've probably never seen is the inside of your eye because well, I don't really need to answer that, <laughs> but it's an incredible organ. Starting with this part over here, uh, you've got sections that control just how much light gets let through, how the light might bend so that it can focus accurately on the back of the eye after passing through this inner thick liquidy bit. Uh, the back of the eye, uh, specifically the retina is what we're interested in focusing uh, the light on. And then information uh, then gets bundled up into the optic nerve that makes its way to the brain. So in a bit more detail, step number one, reception. Uh, that's when light passes through the cornea and pupil and is focused by the lens onto the retina. Uh, here's a little diagram of what the retina is like. It contains lots of things, but of special interest, uh, photoreceptors, which are cells that are sensitive to light energy. There are two types of photoreceptors, rods and cones. Uh, and when these fire, this process is now called transduction uh, because light has now been converted into like an electrical or nerve signal, uh, which goes to the brain. Why do we have two types, rods and cones? Well, they play different roles. For starters, we have a lot more rods than cones in each eye. Uh, rods are also very sensitive to light, which makes them very good at night vision. We rely on them quite a lot when light is very low. Our cones, however, require high levels of light before they can be activated. Rods also have low visual acuity or low detail, and they also only really convey like black and white information to the brain or, or gray. Cones, on the other hand, transmit high levels of detail uh, in terms of what they're seeing to the brain and also tell the brain information uh, to do with color. Rods are concentrated around the edge of the retina, and so they're really important for providing our peripheral vision, whereas cones are what we predominantly rely on for that really focused high detail vision. Here's a diagram that shows how that stuff is organized uh, at the back of the eye. The only one thing a bit confusing about this is that uh, this rectangle is sort of a little bit flipped, like this here is the inside of the eye, that bit there, and this is the back of the eye. Uh, but if you keep that in mind, you've got light coming this way, getting detected by the photoreceptors, either rods or cones. And then you can see behind that, it's like a whole mesh network of things. It's like 
opening up a computer and realizing, all right, there's a lot of stuff going on here. It's like wires and cables everywhere. Amongst this mess though, there's actually a high level of organization going on here. Um, one of which is something called receptive fields, which are groups that rods and cones get organized into. Don't stress too much about trying to figure out exactly how receptive fields work, uh, but know at least that they help with uh, identifying boundaries and edges in vision. And the third step of course is transmission, uh, which is when information from those photoreceptors makes its way to the brain via bipolar cells and then the retinal ganglion cells and then optic nerves and finally to the occipital lobe where the visual cortex is. And of course, you know which part of the brain that's located, right? Yeah, that orange bit right there. All right, well, that covers sensation. In the next video, we're going to have a look at how we perceive uh, vision.